Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter, and I'm here with a video I didn't mean to make. Um, well, I hadn't planned to make, should I put it this way. Um, and this will give you a clue, I've got my 5x7 plate out, again my gel plate. Now, um, I want to say how many days ago was it? Probably about four or five days ago, I released a video on how I made these these backgrounds for my postcards because someone had requested, how do I make backgrounds for my postcards? Um, now I've had a whole load of you going, Kerry, can you show me how you finish those postcards? Well, in, in an answer, the answer is no, I can't show you how I finish them because sometimes I'll work on a postcard for days or I'll start it and then I'll go back to it maybe a week later or something or I will work on several postcards at the same time and then they will come into fruition at some point no designated time slot. However I thought what I could do for you is I could show you the next stage, the next layer of texture of interest I put onto them so hopefully that that will suffice. I just um I just can't show you the whole process. I, I, when I'm creating postcards or backgrounds or ATCs or ephemera, I basically will walk into my craft cave and feel what mood I'm in and go, oh, let's work on postcards today or I'll work on ATCs today. It's very rare that I'll do a whole end-to-end -end project from start to finish. Up. Anyway, forgive me if that's not what you're looking for, but I thought I will give give a follow-up just to show how I do these. So I've got my 5x7 gel press plate. Um, I've got my speedball brayer that I usually use. I've got the pad that I'm creating the roll-off sheets on because, as I said, I'm going to make this into a journal, um, a brayer journal at some point, probably before Christmas, just out of the way. And I've got my acrylic paints. I also have... I've been through my stash of stencils and I pulled out stencils that have got interesting elements in them. Now, I'm not going to be able to tell you the makes of all of these, but at least you'll be inspired by them, hopefully. Well, that one for a start is one of mine. I used to cut my own stencils a long time ago. My stencils have never been on sale. They're just made for me. Um, and I, that was one I used. I use that quite often. Um, this is one I've used before. Couldn't tell you where I found it. I've I think I must have got it at a craft show somewhere. I do use that one quite often. Um, I want to say this one might be a Diane Reevely one or a Dilutions one. And I'm almost certain that is a Dilutions one. Um, this, I think, came as part of a kit. And I think it was more than this stencil in the kit. And I like the kit. It's got small elements and it works really well when you're reckoning that's the size of the canvas you're working on. These ones, um, and you'll see these in use, these these two, I think, there's another one, I think these two came as part of a home decor stencil kit that I either got on Amazon or eBay, probably eBay to be honest, I don't shop Amazon that much, and there was about 20 in the kit, I think, all different designs, and I use those quite often. Not sure where that came from. I mean, if you do recognize any of these stencils, by the way, by all means, put a rough description in the comments with whose stencil they are. And then anyone looking through the comments will be able to see. So, um, as I said, I usually just get rid of the packaging. For me, I just grab the stencil, whichever stencil. Um, this is definitely a Tim Holtz. And as you can see by the layers and layers and layers of paint on that one, I use that one a lot. And again, I don't know what that one is or who it's by. So anyway, that'll just give you a rough idea. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to spend a little bit of time putting maybe a couple of layers of interest onto these, just show up how I build the layers. I pulled out some blank postcards, just so if I need to clean up my surface, I'll just start building on new ones. So um, that's that. Right, let me get started. And then there's a few things, or there's a favour I want to ask of you. So I'm going to use this colour first. And I think I want to put something... I will normally look for transparency or semi transparency at this point. So I want to make sure I've got something that's going to be dark enough to show up, but not too dark that it dominates. Frosted mint. I think I might try that on there. I've got a feeling it might be a touch too light. But then what I'll do is I might use the same colour for maybe one of the others as well. So just building up as we go. So put that to one side. Um, okay, the question I want to ask you guys as a favour, I have had a comment 
And I think it's the same person who's commented the same comment twice, once in the past and once currently. And they've said that they find it very difficult to hear my my videos. They think my volume is too low. Now, when I record, I don't use a microphone, but what I do do is part of the editing process, I will actually um, increase my um, volume on the video by 200%. So I know that it is quite quite high up volume wise and I'm wondering whether it's a case of um, it's the person's equipment that is not loud enough or whether I really do need to up my equipment or my recording level so right um, so if you can put in the comments that volume okay or volume too low or volume too loud that would help me because I, I have no way because when I listen to my own videos they sound fine but I, I would just ask you to do that for me if you don't mind. Right, I'm going to take this and I'm going to press this down. I'm not looking for perfect impressions. I'm looking for this. I'm looking for interest. So that could go on there. I think I've got this one will use it as well. I'm going to come in and lift that off there. So basically, it's not entirely visible. I don't want my layers to be stark contrast. I mean, it's probably going to be a bit brighter on this one. And I'm not pressing the whole thing down, just sections, because I want to build up the interest in the background. I could eventually stamp on these. Maybe I'll put rice paper on. So I'm just looking. I think I've got another one. That's got some blue in it. And I quite like to pull some of that off. Let's take that and pop it on. So see, it just gives it a something. Then I'll take these off. I will probably press these down on my brayer sheet, to be honest, just because it helps me clean off the back of the stencils and it adds another bit of interest to my Brea pad um, and it doesn't waste paint. I mean, just as an example, there you go, those are the two I've just done and you can see, can you see? Hopefully you can see that I've got some interest there and there. So I've got stuff on this plate so I'm just going to come in with a couple of regular postcards and just lift some stuff up, just get some stuff on the go. I mean, that's a lovely watery effect on there. Um, so there you go. So yes, my intent was not to do this video today. I did have another video in the offing. I've got um, a video on how to do a journal from um, a gift bag, which is going to be probably coming out in a week's time now, because I've decided to do this one first, because you guys wanted it and I'm all for if you want something let me know I will always write down your idea or your request and I will try to get to it I can never get to stuff immediately I mean that's that's just the way of the world to be honest um, however I will try to get there eventually right there's some stuff on there not worried about that okay I'm going to look at this one now and I think this one I'd like to pull in some of the reddish color into this I was tempted to do this color here which is quite a deep teal um, but I want to pull in some red into this so I think I want to look around see if I've got something that's a transparent red and I think I do I do have a transparent red there you go so I'm going to put some transparent red on top of let's take that off of there um, transparent red on top of here it shouldn't um, matter too much with the pearlization there because that pearlization may get picked up as extra detail anyway. So I'm just putting a reasonable coat on my gel plate. I'm not doing it too thin because obviously I'm putting a stencil onto it. So I'm just going to clean my brayer off. Um, let's use one of these. How big is it? Actually, you can put that right across there. Right, for me it's quite important to have the orientation either vertical or horizontal, whichever it is. I'm going to come in and just pick up pieces of this. See, I just want to build up little bits in the background and I will do that with any of them that I think I want to add red to. Like that one I think would look nice with the touch of red in it. And I'm trying to line the edge up with the line of the design. That's, that's, that's a me thing, that's not essential. It's just the way my brain is wired. Um, I find designs more pleasing if they're horizontal or vertical. Um, if you see me do college, college, collage, I very rarely do collage on an angle. Okay, I seem to have got the same bit twice. I'll just put a little bit on this one, just because I can. 
So there you go. Right, I'm just throwing them up there because we'll get to them eventually. Again, I'm going to take this off. Now I could press this down onto another postcard, but that's that's not what I'm planning to do with them. If I was working on backgrounds, I may well do that. So I'm going to pick up a couple of more of the postcards I have put to one side, just to give it a bit of something on there. And get rid of that white edge, you'll be happier. And we will literally just build and build as we go. Now, there may come a time when I'm like, I really want to change the colour palette up a bit. Um, and then what I will do is I will use a bit of tissue to clean this off. I come in and bring a bar of that into there. Maybe a bar of that onto there. So I'll put a bit up in that corner too. So as you can see, I just randomly keep adding stuff. And eventually they become pieces of art. Right, I've got that on there. I think, as I've just said, I'm just going to bring in a bit of tissue paper and just give this a little bit of a clean. Not that I'm overly worried, but if I was to put yellow or something on here, I'd obviously then end up with orange. If I was to put green on here, I'd end up with brown. So I have to be conscious of mixing up the colours too much. Right. Um, yes, yeah, so let's look at this one. This has got golds and yellows. I quite like that terracotta through there. Um, and there's a couple that I've already done over here that might do with a touch of terracotta, like that one could probably do with terracotta. So I'll see what design I pull in and see what I want to do for that. So let's have a little bit of a look. Actually, I'm saying terracotta. That sunflower yellow could be quite nice on there as well. Um, and there is terracotta, right. Let's, let's use a combination of both of these. I don't mind doing a bit of a what's that called, ombre on here, and then when I pick stuff up, I'll be picking stuff up. I must be using this one quite a bit. It's, it's running low. And I think just for a bit of a giggle on the side, I'm going to put a little bit of orange on here as well, just, just to amp that up a little bit. And I'm just going to use my brayer, and I'm just going to load the brayer and work it up and down slightly, just so I've got the colour combinations on there. And again, clean my brayer off. I'm going to come in. I think I want to put the dots on next. So, as I said, this is one of my own stencils that I've, I created several years ago. And I find it very useful. And it just gives me hints of bits of pattern. And I tried to be as random as I possibly could when I was creating this one. As in where I put the dots. So that I don't have a uniformness about it, if that is such a word. And I did, didn't want it to be a continuous design. Um, I didn't want to be able to link it together. This was purely the reason I designed this one, was that I could actually just randomly pick up bits of stuff. Now, as we're picking the stuff that's exposed up, of course, there's paint underneath here. So what I'll do is I'll come back in and I will lift this stencil off as I'm doing there. And then as you can see, there's stuff on there. There's also stuff on there, which is quite nice. Now, I think I want to pick up some of that onto one or two of these, like this one could do with a little bit of that. So I'm just going to come in and as I do before, I sort of kiss it down on the surface just to pull stuff up. A little bit here, a little bit there, just to give it a bit of interest. Like this one here, I think I'm going to lay it down and pick up quite a bit of this. Pick this one up. There you go, that's made that quite rich. And then I'll look across here because obviously the terracotta, the yellow, and all of that would work quite well with the red I've got on here. So just bringing in, because they're all warm colors, they will all blend together quite nicely in the final design. So there you go, just clean that one up, got that to one side. So let's pull these over here because I've got, I'm beginning to stack stuff over there when really I want to keep it over here so that you can kind of see where I'm going with the things I'm working on. Okay, now I'm going into some real dark zones and some real light zones. So these two are quite light, those two are quite dark. So I need to give this a little bit of thought. Let's see, where am I at? Um, Looking at these, I think I'd like to add, I wonder whether I've got a transparent purple anywhere. I think that's the one I was thinking of. It's a Windsor Blue. 
no, I'm lying, there it is, it's winter violet, that's what I've sent off. I think if I put a winter violet down on here, it will, this pearl essence in the background will give a really nice lift to the design. A bit of an air bubble in the tube. There you go. Um, Winter Newton, I quite like this Galleria acrylic range. It's quite a creamy paint, um, which is quite pleasant to use. So, and it says it's transparent, so as long as I don't put it on too thickly, it will definitely be transparent. I'll just get that onto the Braille sheet. Um, let's see. Let's go with this one. I quite like this one. Well, I quite like all of them, or I wouldn't own them, let's put it that way. Now, um, as you know, I do love PM Artist Studio stencils and masks, but I specifically chose not to use them here because I know not everyone has access to them or wants to buy them or has them in their collection. I'm going to put some on here as well, to be honest. Um, and I thought, let's just see whether, because some of these stencils you guys may already have in your stash. So if I'm just showing an example of how I build up layers, I want to put a bit on here as well. Just, just bits and pieces. Let's take this off of here. Give it a bit of a roller down. And of course, what I'm getting left behind now, where I had the negative space pulling through, I've got parts of the design that were actually intended to be used, which is really lovely. Now I think I'm going to come in and utilize this on one of my other ones, the new ones I was using, just to get something going on them. And I think I'll just keep adding these to the pile now of backgrounds that I'm creating. I mean, after all, we are heading towards the holiday season here for Christmas, so I suppose I could start utilizing these as Christmas themes if I wanted to. Um, not sure. I don't really do a lot of, well, I don't do a lot of card making. I mean, I do some making of cards for friends and family, but it's not really something I do a lot of. So I don't really have a need for a lot of cards, but I do like to make my own gift tags when I give gifts to people in the season of holiday season. Um, so I may use them as that, or I, I will put them in as notelets or things like that. Right, let's pull all of these back together so I've got them in one one collective and then start working on other colours. Now, there's a bit of purple on there. I'm not worried about that. I'm going to leave the purple on there. Um, I've still got a few more blanks and I've still got a few more stencils to one side. I think I want to actually work now maybe with some lighter colours because we did have darker colours coming in down here, rather, the darker ones there. And I think I want to put maybe... Um, some white because I don't want to keep going darker and darker and darker because then you lose the impact if you've got only dark all the time. So I think we're going to put some white on here and I think I actually might use white chalk paint. Now um, my white chalk paint, I don't know if you can see it there, it separates out into liquid and pigment so I do tend to shake my um, tubes of chalk paint. I don't normally shake any other tu tubes of paint, but I do with my chalk paint. So just know that you may see me doing that. Okay, I'm wondering, just playing around with a few ideas. Maybe not that one. I'm saving this for one of my top layers. I do really like this one. I think we might use white on that. So. Let's get the white on the go. Now, the white paint, which is a chalk paint, is completely opaque. Um, even if I roll it out thin, it's going to be opaque. So I do need to be conscious when I'm using this that I don't go pressing it down absolutely completely, um, the postcard, because I know that I just want elements of this picked up. So I'm going to come in and just touch it down, just to pick up little pieces here and there. See what I mean? Just just enough to, now I'm gonna try and focus on that bit there. See, so just to get bits and pieces in. I do love this stencil, I really do. I don't know where I, where I got it from, I must admit, it's 
it must have been at a craft show or a convention or something and they were on display because I will very often when I'm working at a show I'll walk around as you would anyway just to take a break from the stand and I will I will look at other products and I tend to impulse buy if something calls to me or talks to me I, I will just go and buy it um, purely because I know that at some point I'll think back and go Ooh, what was that stencil? What was that mask? Where was it? And then really want it. See, I like that. It's giving it a nice frosty look. Let's pick up that bit off the edge there. Just a little bit on there. Right, lift this off. Let's brayer that off on my brayer sheet. If I remember, I'll show you the brayer sheet at the end. It's not going to be hugely interesting, but it's definitely going to be interesting. Right, I've got some really nice stuff on there. So let's see if I can pull in some of these new ones. This one, I quite like this one. Let's just lift that off. See, it's just adding that little bit extra texture to there visually. Actually, why don't I just do the whole thing there? You go. Right, that's nice and frosty. That was already quite frosty. This could do with a bit of nurturing, should we say? That's given that a layer of something. This one again, I like to add a bit of that on there. And I don't mind a bit of that on there. Actually, I don't like that line down the middle. Let's see if I can eliminate that line. Yeah, just a little bit. Okay, I think I think we've got as much as we're going to get off there. I'll just basically try and clean up anything that's left on the plate. Just to add a layer of gunge. I'll put that to one side. Right. Um, so let's think now. I've got lots of layers on these. So let's see. Things are looking nice. That one needs something. These two I'm going to have to be careful. I don't get too dark with those. This needs a something. Maybe not. That needs something. That hasn't even been touched. Nor has that. Not keen about that being smack in the middle. That might be okay. That needs a something right. So now I know roughly what I'm looking at. And then we've got the cleanup postcards, which are becoming very pretty over on one side. I think we're going to come in. And I think I might start thinking about using this one. And if I'm using this one because it's all different designs, I'm going to try and keep the color down here. And I think I want something with a bit of um, punch to it, a bit of oomph. Um, I'm thinking more contrasty now. So let me have a little bit of a think. I'm trying to think a colour that would work across a lot of them. And I'm wondering whether I've got a green that would work across quite a lot of them. What colour is that? Is that lime? Anise green. I know it's a bit of an odd colour color but we'll go with it and I think what I'm going to do is it will also pick up whatever's down on the plate so we it will not be as vibrant I think but we will see that's why I like gel printing because I never actually know what the results are going to be right so I'm going to line this up I should want that way round I've decided Lined it up so that if I get pieces, I don't get all. I don't mind the edges there being exposed. That's okay with me. See, just little pieces here and there is exactly what I want to do. So this one needs something in the middle. So I'm just going to literally press that down in the middle there. This needs a something pretty much all over. Now I'm using stencils. You could actually use anything you have to hand that you can get a pattern through. Like I've seen people use bath mats. I've seen people use table mats. I've seen people use plastic, um, what are they called? Um, plastic doilies. I've seen all of those sort of things used. I'm gonna put a bit of this down here just to get little bits of that on it. And I'm thinking, I'm kind of thinking more Christmassy with this one, just to get something I can work on later. That. See, just elements within it, just elements. So, let's 
So I'm seeing lots of you are actually, actually it's quite funny to me that a lot of you already own a gel plate, but you've never actually used it. You, you've, you've obviously seen a video or you've seen someone demonstrate one and you love the idea, but a lot of you have just never taken the gel plate out of its packaging, which I find quite sad because I'm like, I love the technique. And yes, I know it's a bit intimidating when you see someone producing beautiful stuff and you're like, I can never do that. I never know what I'm doing with that. Just have a go, guys. It's paint. It's a little bit of time. I love doing this purely because it's just something that's going on. Um, I can be thinking of other things. I don't, I try not to make design decisions about this. I literally just put the stuff down and go for it. And there's a certain set of feel of freedom about that when you're just willing to be willing to make a mistake is what I'm trying to go for. You never know, you may create the next awesome thing without even knowing it. You may find a skill or a joy you never even knew you had in your creativity. Um, I personally, because I have anxiety issues and, and I'm OCD, which is a good mixture there, um, I like the fact that I can't really control what I'm producing and that works for me. Right, the green was a good idea. I do like, we'll look through all of them at the end of it. Right, let's have another think about which ones I want to work with. That needs drama, that needs drama. This one's growing on me. These two I keep hesitating about, so let's put them there. That one's almost there. That one needs a something. Don't know, that might need something. This I think, it's almost there. Wish I didn't have that line down there. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get anything off there. No, I can't. That will need work. I think this one, this one I'm going to class as done. There's something about this because I would go in and add more. Remember, I'm not creating a finished postcard. I'm purely creating the next level of the background. So I'm going to put this one to one side because I believe that I want to think of that one as finished. This one also, there's something very nice about this. It's fresh, it's bright, it's light. I think I'm going to put that into my finish pile. That one needs a bit of something. This again, if I was to come in with some dramatic moments in here, maybe with doodling or tissue paper or rice paper. Again, I like that one. That one's going the right direction. I don't want to toy with that one. This one I'm still unsure about. Let's pull in pull in the other ones. There's something about that. I'm going to keep that one and not touch it any further. That one needs help and that one needs help. Right, so we've got some, some piles of stuff going on. I think I just want to clean this off or just lift that off with a bit of anything really, just, just to get it off the plate. So what's this? Um, champagne. Okay, I'm not using this on any of the postcards. I'm literally just going to use this to clean the plate with a bit of tissue paper, purely because I just, I don't really want that green on that plate anymore. It's not going to lift a lot off, but it'll lift enough off that if I do want to lift anything else off, I can just lift it with a damp cloth. Yeah, it didn't lift a lot, but it got some of it. Oh, that's quite interesting. Um, got a bit off so it's just bringing a damp cloth just to give it a bit of a clean down. Um, another question for you guys that you can add in the comments for me which would be helpful is I know you guys like watching me gel print and I'm, I'm by no means an expert in it and I've always claimed I'm just taking you guys along with me on the journey but if there's anything you'd like me to try on the gel plate I'm open for that I'm so open to try other stuff. Right, uh, just put in the comments. And I, I have a notepad when I do comments. And if someone comes up with something that intrigues me, I write it down and I try to utilize it. Okay, I think it's time I bought this one in. And I really like this. And I probably use this too often. Um, but I'm wondering whether I can get... Yeah, I'll probably get both of those on at the same time. And that would give me variety, right? I'm looking now or something that's going to add maybe a bit of drama to these. So the colours seem to be teals or greens. This one still bothers me. I'm not sure where I'm going with that one. 
There's dark teal, right? Let's put some dark teal on here, purely because I like dark teal. Now, just because I've set things up in that corner are finished, they may not be finished. I may decide that I want to come back in and put more onto them. So, um, I use my gut instinct as to knowing when things are finished or when I perceive them to be finished. Um, I do have lots of questions of how do you know when you're finished? I don't actually know, guys. I just I just keep going until I either go too far, which believe me, I've gone too far before now, or I I just go, I'm tired, I want to stop and I'll come back to it another day. Right, this needs something. I quite like the idea of the Tim Holtz one on here. Just little bits like that are probably just what I'm looking for. Now, I have to put a bit of pressure to get the plate to come up through the stencil to add something to this. Right, that one's not going to have anything more on that probably. This one, I don't like this letter H thing. So let's just lift some of those blocks out. Let me put a bit of that on the side. As I said, we'll look at these later. Now, I've got to be careful with this one because this one is beginning to be very centrally heavy. So I think if I come in and take this pattern right across the top, it might unify it a bit more. So I'm still not getting... Everything seems to be in the centre of this postcard and I'm trying to get the interest out. I don't mind putting a different shape. That one's getting very busy. Now, if you get to the point where you're like, it's just not working, put a coat of light over the top and knock it all back again. Right, this one, what I'm going to do is lift this off here and see all of that lovely goodness on there. I'm just going to lift off the majority of it onto this one. Give myself a little bit more at the other end. See, that's giving me some really dark richness to this. Let's lift up some of this on here. Now I'm going to come in and lift some of these on here because I've got quite a bit of paint in there. Let's throw that there. I'm going to bring in this and lift some of that on there. Postcards are wonderful guys. Now the thing is that I use postcards as postcards. I will use them as journal cards. I mean I could come in and snip the corners off there make it a fat tag. I will very often use them as a topper for a journal cover. I've been known to put them onto um, a background before now and actually use them as standalone art piece. There's lots of different ways you can use these. So even though I'm calling them a postcard, think of them as just a decorative piece of card. I'm gonna come in and I wanna do something just to take that little bit back, like that one. So yes, use them as you wish. I mean, any of you who do ATCs, artist trading cards, because of the size of this, I could probably cut this down into two artist trading cards. And, and that's a quick way to make bulk trading cards. I'm just pulling off some of the stuff on here. Now, I think I want to do the same thing again with this, but I want to use a different color. And, I want, and I'm thinking that because more of that. My brayer is clean enough so I can put something else on here. But I think what I want to do is I want to pick up something that's going to be maybe pearlescent or something light. Something with a punch of something in it is what I'm trying to get at. Now, I found this colour two days ago in my hobby craft. I've not used it before. Peebo Studio Acrylics High Viscosity. This is the DYNA range, it's 358. And this is the most amazing, shiny, um, and what color do they call it? I just really Iridescent green blue. I loved this color when I saw it. And I think if I'm using this design, there's just thin enough that it's not gonna overpower this. So this was a nice find. I liked this. I, I hadn't seen this color before. I'd be quite interested in getting the whole DYNA range of these colors, but I haven't done it, obviously. Um, my local hobby craft don't carry the whole range, so so basically I will find the most time goes by. Right, this one, like this, want a bit of this on there. See, 
just pulling up just sections and I think for me that's going to pretty much be done. This bit down here I just want to grab a little bit of a line just to bring it on. I want a bit more of that actually. Just so I've got a little bit of the colour introduced. Take some of that into the corner as well. Okay I think I'm going to put that to one side. This one now this is quite dark so I really do think it's going to benefit from some shimmer and shine. I'm going to try and lift quite a bit of that actually. There you go. It's just this. This one isn't ready yet. This one I'm liking. I think I might try and pick up some of this again on that edge. Maybe a bit over there as well. Maybe put a bit of a pattern in the middle. There you go. Quite liking it. I'm making H's today by the looks of it. The letter H. I seem to be generating that a lot. Right, I'm going to put that one up there as a thoughtful. Right, I'm just going to come in with this one and just lay it down and see what I pick up. Because I'm about to lift up the stencil anyway. Just to see what comes up. There's not a lot coming up and that's because I've already pulled, pulled the paint out of those bits. But that's actually looking nice. That's now going to be class as finished. I'll lift that one up. Now I've got all that beautiful stuff down there. Now for me this area is quite dark. But if I come in and lift that up. It's got a shimmer to it now and I want to balance it up with a little bit on the other side. So there you go. That, that's nice. Um, not sure that that's done actually. Let's leave that one there. This one is getting very muddy for me. So I'm going to come in and just put something. Over. See already that's knocked that into the background without showing too much of the swirling design by Tim Holtz. But it's put a layer in there. This one for me is getting a bit too complex. So I'm going to pick up. All of this. I might actually take my brayer to make sure I get really good contact on this one. While that one's sat there, I'm just going to clean up the edge of this with this here. A little bit more down there if I can get it. Just cleaning up my plate as I go, adding bits of layers. I'm not liking this in here, that's a bit too clumpy for me. But, ooh, that went really dark. Okay, this will probably be a good example of how to just knock everything back. I'm going to put that there and we'll look at that in a moment. Right, um, let's have a look at the ones we've done. I am quite liking that one actually. I think we're going to keep that one. Keep that. Actually, I like those two, two as well. Right, we're going to keep those. We already said we're going to keep that one. So now we're on to this, this collection. Now I want to get away from the teal now or else I'm going to be really just delving into teal all the time, aren't I? It's one of my favourite colours, so yeah, you know me. I'm going to actually just do exactly what I always do and just keep adding and adding and adding. So what what have I got left? I've got, I put these back to one side. I did like this. I'm, I'm not sure, I need to think about that. Right, let's deal with this. Actually, it's probably too wet to deal with. Let's just leave it as it is then. We'll come back to that in a minute. Right, I think what I want to do is I want to put stuff on here because to me that's too busy. But if I just put an, a thin layer of opaque and pull some of the paint off, that might help. Um, let's have a quick look. There's quite a wide range of colours. That, that one needs help as well. Let's put, put that in that pile. That needs help too. There's quite a few need help actually. This is one of my favourite colours currently, buttermilk. I'm going to come in and I'm going to um, kiss some colour onto this. So I'll take that off there. Take that away. Um, kiss some colour onto the ones that are still left here. Just so that I've got a layer that knocks everything into the background without using um, a stencil or a mask, just literally just getting the stuff out of here. I don't want it to be too thick of a layer because I don't want it to blot out everything. So I'm going to come in. So this one, that sort of area, so I'm just going to touch it down and pick up bits. Just, and that's enough for that one. 
Now that then gives me the option of building another layer over the top but not obliterating everything that's underneath. Right, I said this one was too busy and it's sort of too busy in the middle. So just by doing that, I've knocked it all back a bit. I've already done that one, done that one, done that one. This here, I like it, but just, just a little bit of something. I think just a little bit in there as well. Actually, that wasn't what I intended to do. That's more what I intended to do. Maybe just by there. Right, I'm going to leave that one. That will be fine. Let's see. These two. This just is too bright for me, so that's that's got to be knocked back. And that bit there. This, mm, not really working for me, so that can come down. And all I'm doing is taking off the remainder that's on the plate now and just creating a barrier. Now I'm going to use this one to clean up this whole plate because there's too much going on on this card and some of the opaque will actually cover up everything else that's going on there so see it's now become a lot more subtle now I'm going to talk about these two in that yes you can knock that back with a different color so we've got all of the blues and everything on there I'm not overly happy with how that's happened so I'm going to come in and I'm going to use the pearl that we used in the first place, the mint, and I'm going to re-establish a paler level before I do anything more on there. So I'm going to come in, it's quite a thin layer. I'm going to come in and do that kissing motion, but quite, quite a lot on this one. See what I mean? That's now made it a lot more interesting, a lot less busy. And again, knock that back. Just get rid of that green on the side there. Now, because I've got stuff on the plate, I can come in and lift some of this again. Now, this pearl is going to give me a nice little bit of definition. Let's take the red out of that one. It's okay to change your mind. It's absolutely okay to go in a different direction. We can't be right every single decision we make. And a lot of the time, I don't know what it's going to look like until I've taken it back off the plate. This one I'm quite liking. If I can just do some subtle mint pearl on that, I think that might be it. I think I'm going to leave that one. That one works for me. This one, that's just a bit too blocky. If there is such a word. Now, I've got a dry plate now. So, right. So I have this pearl. Let's see if I've got another pearl that might also work. I thought I had a pink pearl somewhere. I've got a pearl blush. Okay, probably not the colour you thought I was going to reach for. Probably not the colour I thought I was going to reach for, sir. So. This is the same brand, Artiste um, Do Crafts, or Do Crafts, I don't know how you pronounce it. So, depends on which side of the Atlantic you're on, probably, as to how you pronounce that. So, right. So I want to get that to be a little more, that's fine, I like that, it's not that. Okay, that's going to be done as far as I'm concerned. This one, the purples will work quite well with pinks. That That's busy, but once there's a focal point, I think that, that would work. This one probably wouldn't have put pink on this one, but let's see what it looks like. I'm okay with that. Right, we had these two that turned uber dark and we're trying to get them back again. I think I would leave that because now I think there's layers of interest within there and I might be able to pull that back. So we're going to call that done. This one is interesting as it is, but I've also got to be careful that there's so much paint on this postcard now that it's beginning to feel slightly wet. If the postcard is too wet, sometimes it won't pull the paint off the plate. The plate will pull the layer of paper off this. So you've got to be careful of that. Right, I'm just going to give us a bit of a clean up just to get the remnants of this off. And actually, I quite like that one now. I was thinking I didn't like it earlier on. But now my eyes have been away from it and rested for a little bit. I kind of do. So I've got a few here that I'm a little bit hesitant about. I mean, I've said I like this one, but I'm still unsure. 
So I think what I need to do now is I'm going to do one more layer of something, which is just bubble wrap. And this one I've used umpteen times. Now, the more layers of paint that go onto the bubble wrap, the more likely when you press them on that other colours are going to come off it. So I'm going to just use white. I'm going to come in and pick up and just tap down just to give these a little bit of a something. You can see it, but you can't really see it. Right, I'm considering that one done. As I said, I will show you absolutely everything at the end of this video, because I'm trying to not lay them on top of each other, because if I do that, guess what? They're all going to stick to each other. Right, a little bit more white on there. Come in, I want to put it in this area here. Hopefully I've been in shot for most of this because I've not been checking. I've just been working away. That gives me a little bit of something. I'm okay with that. Right, I've got some nice yumminess going on on here. And I think I might come in with one of the ones that I thought was done, this one, and just press it down, take little bits of it off. I like to create prints where people have to look into the print they it's not obvious when you first look at it what what the print is about i like them to go oh you've seen that bit and have you looked at that bit and have you looked at that bit and of course all of these will have a focal point on them or they'll have a very dramatic something added to them this is just another layer of paint right Right, I've got permanent magenta. It says it's a transparent. So I'm going to use permanent magenta with my, if I can get that open, with my bubble wrap. And add some colour to some of these. Um, it, it says it's transparent, although because of the thickness of the paint I'm probably going to be putting on there, it's probably not going to be transparent. It's going to be um, quite a heavy layer. So that the dots that are on there... I can see I'm going to be cleaning my workbench immediately after I've stopped filming. So do you see what I mean? It just adds a something. Let's put those to one side. I want to add it to this as well. I don't know why this piece just keeps calling to me. Just a little something. And this is why my workspace gets messy. I'm going to bring in all of the ones that I said were finished and just add bits as I go along because, as I said, this is my next layer of interest so and this is how i do it i mass produce i know i've probably said that a thousand times in this video already and you're probably all getting a bit over me going this is how i do it this is how i do it so you ask me how i do it all the time and this is literally what i do i just mass produce um some of it's a bit hit and miss some of it will work some of it may not work but i just enjoy the process and for me, it's not always about creating. A lot of the time, it's about not being under stress or anxiety of what's going on in the real world. My craft cave, or the area I create in, for me, is just such a sanctuary of just being able to turn the world off. And, and that, to me, is really, really important because I do hold down several jobs. Um, I have lots of different interests and and to be able to escape them sometimes almost like recharges my batteries and then when I go back to doing them um, I enjoy them even more. I think a lot of the time that we get so intense about doing something that the enjoyment isn't there and it's good occasionally just to remind yourself why do I do this? I do this because I love it. I do it because I'm lucky enough to be able to do it. Um, I also do it because you guys like me to do it. So this one was going to have nothing on it, but I seem to have changed my mind. Um, yeah, I just, I love doing this. I, I love just getting messy and creative and just producing art. For me, that's, that's a special thing, a gift that I've been given that I can do. Right, let's move all that to one side. Get rid of Mr. Bubble Wrap. Let's clean Mr. Brayer off. Don't know why they're all Mr. today, but they are Mr. Right, 
Let's put him out the way to be cleaned later. I'm going to give this a quick wipe with my... This was the brayer off sheet that I made today. Um, as I said, I'm planning to make a journal out of all the brayer off sheets in here so that one side will be the colour, the other you'll be able to write on. I'm going to make a journal out of it. I'm not sure what I'm doing with the journal, but I'm going to make a journal out of it. So let's so, see what we did. So this was one of our clean off ones. Started as a regular blank postcard. There you go, blank postcards. Buy them in bulk from my stationery store. That just started. That to me is very Christmas. I'm liking that. This was another clean off one. Another one that was just a postcard. This was one of the initial backgrounds. I quite like the way you look at that and you really do have to look at that. There are so many different layers within that. Here's another one of the ones I did in the previous video. So you can see the character has changed. A lot of people will ask me, why do you do all of that? Because you've now covered up the background. You haven't. You can still see hints of it through. And that's the reason I like mixed media is because it changes, it evolves, it becomes its own being. So there you go. There was another one of those, just those white clean off ones. This one, you can see more of the original one in the background. That's fine. I will go in. I may put um, texture paste on this. I may stencil a design on top. I may actually stick something to it. I may put um, a focal point that's fabric. It's whatever I wish it to be. This is quite nice. I was not sure about that on there originally, but I quite like that now. This next one, not my colours. However... I won't get rid of this one. I don't want cover because I mean I could. I mean this is the way my imagination works, guys. I can see a flamingo sitting on there quite easily, probably that way up. So the flamingos there. So um, these seem to remind me of poinsettias. So maybe that's going to become a Christmas one. This one I quite like. This one now. It was one of the ones that was really busy and I was a bit hesitant, but I'm I'm okay with that. I like that. Uh, this one had the teals in. This to me. I would hesitate to say this might actually be finished. Like finished, finished. I mean, as an abstract postcard. I like this. I'm not sure that I won't just call this absolutely done and dusted because there's just so much loveliness and yumminess about that. Again, this one. Um, this is not going to take much to finish this one. I can sort of, there's something that needs to go there. But I can see stuff in this. I can see, I mean, okay, imagination overload here. I can see trees. I can see a lake. I can see a, a, a cabin with a window in it. I, mean, I see that sort of stuff and I look at them. And I know you guys do as well, because in previous of my videos, you've gone, oh, did you see the face in the corner? And you've seen the dragon when you do this. And that's fascinating. I love hearing what people see. Now, this one, we we had a really busy card, so I put that pearl over the top. But you can still see some of the busyness, and it adds to the interest. This one, I quite like this colour combination. I wouldn't have put permanent magenta, teal, turquoise, blue, lime green. I wouldn't have done that on there. And there's probably some grey or silver in there as well. That's a nice one. This one, not sure about this corner. This one may need something more. Well, they'll all need to look at anyway before I sign them off as completely finished. This one quite liked that. That just is. I mean, and that's the other thing. I don't know which orientation they're going in. So that's that's a cute one. This was one of the ones that was far too dark and we pulled it back to lightness. I'm quite liking that now. I'm not sure that I want all of the shininess on it, but I could just put matte medium over this would so knock that back. I could even rub a stamp onto this. I could put text on here. I could do anything like that. This one is another one I think is possibly finished. There's just enough on here. I'm not sure. I, I need to think about this one. And then we've got this one, which went really dark. Then I pulled it all the way back. And you know what? I think if the right thing was on this page, uh, this postcard, like for some reason, this reminds me of the ocean. This reminds me of ocean spray. And that's a dark night above it. So there may be something I put here. I don't know. I'm just gossiping and gabbling on, aren't I? So there you go. So I think um, hopefully that has made the people who were asking me to show them a finished postcards um, keep you happy um, I can't as I said give you 
give you a finished process because it takes too long. It just it would be a really boring video of me just coloring or cutting or pasting or glue or sticking. I will do stuff as I go along when I can. Maybe in the future I'll take say one of these and go right. Let's finish this off and try and do it on screen. But for me. I, I, I want time to think things through. I want to look at the design and go, where will I go with that? And I'll put this down and come back a week later and go, okay, what did I see and do I still see it or do I see something different? And I think that's important, walking away from your art and then walking back to it after a period of time gives you a fresh eye and a fresh perspective. Okay, I'm gonna stop gossiping here and I'm gonna say it's time. So thank you for joining me on this one. Hopefully you found it interesting to see how these um, postcards will evolve over time. Um, I'm Kerry the Crafter, that's C-E-R-I the Crafter. Until next time, thank you guys and bye-bye now.